Welcome to worship on Palm Sunday. A day in which we remember Jesus' entrance into Jerusalem. And we begin with a reading from the Gospel of John. The next day, the great crowd that had come to the festival heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches of palm, palm trees and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it, as it is written. Do not be afraid, daughter of Zion. Look, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. Let us join together in our song of preparation, Oh, when the saints, which will meld into Psalm 24. Oh, when the saints go marching in, oh, when the saints go marching in, oh, Lord, I want to be in that number. Hear, O oh God, the confessions of our hearts, and grant forgiveness through Christ our Lord. Amen. Before Jesus was ever born into the world, the angel came to Joseph, saying, Do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child born of her is of the Holy Spirit. You shall name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. I declare to you the truth. Through Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Now join together in our opening hymn of praise, a Palm Sunday hymn, all glory, laud, and honor.
Now join me in the passing of the peace. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And may God's peace be with you also. Amen. I'm excited about what comes after this service. We're going to follow Jesus. We're going to get in our cars and have a Palm Sunday procession. But you know, I got to thinking. There's more than one way to follow Jesus. In fact, there's numerous ways. Do you know that there are many people in our congregation and throughout the world who are making these masks? They're making them so that when we go out, we can be safe. Yes, I know you can't hear me as well in this mask, but it's protection. And those who make them and those who wear them, they're following Jesus as well. Oh, there's another way. Yes, calling people on your phone to check and see if they're all right, sending them a text. That's following Jesus, reaching out to those who need to be heard. Pen, paper, writing a note, writing a card, wearing a mask, making a mask. There are many ways to follow Jesus. And on this Palm Sunday, I want us to think about following Jesus, not just in a parade after church, but throughout the week and in the days to come. And remember, stay safe. Our children's song reminds us that we need to march and sing and dance in the light of God.
Prayers for Richard Wilson of Bedford, and he is in the hospital as well. Prayers for all the school kids, their parents, teachers, everybody that's having to deal with the, the coronavirus at this time. Um, prayers for Ivan and Sandy Williams. Both are having health issues at this time. Also some prayers for all the shut-ins and the health care workers, the truck drivers, and all of the essential workers, people that are having to continue to go to work, as well as those that are shut at home. We have, oh, sorry. One more. Uh, Danielle Sawyer or Sauer with COVID-19. Um, a prayer for Danielle Sauer, who- Steve oh, Sawyer's oh. daughter. Oh, yes, okay. Yeah, Danielle Sawyer, who um, was recently diagnosed with COVID-19. We have a prayer request from Sarah Miller, and that request is for Roger Abbott, who lost his beautiful bride, Jane, after a long, hard-fought battle with cancer. And also a prayer request from Mindy Bose Gable. Prayers for her dad, Eldon Bose, who is in a rehab hospital in Yuma, Arizona right now. And a joy, let's thank God for this beautiful day and the, the, all the nature that is springing up, the, the flowers, the birds that are singing. Let's find some joy in this sad time. Let us pray. O God of mercy and grace, we thank you that you are with us in the midst of all situations. We thank you that you love us and care for us, that living or dying, we belong to you. We lift up today those who have been named. We lift up Dennis and Doug and Danielle we lift up Eldon and Roger. We lift up Bob and Roberta, Richard and Kay. We lift up parents and students and teachers. We lift up Ivan and Sandy Williams. We lift up all who are shut in. We lift up our health care workers on the front line, our truck drivers and all essential workers. We lift up Kylie and the Harris family after the death of Sherry. We lift up the unspoken concerns of our hearts, Lord, even as we rejoice in the coming of spring and the coming of the resurrection. Hear the prayers of your people as we pray the prayer you taught, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our minute for mission is once again a reminder of the one great hour of sharing offering the offering that goes out from the Presbyterian Church and other churches to support the ministries, the mission of our church to those who are less fortunate. And also, a reminder, checkbooks are important. You might want to write a check for your church, whatever your home church is, to help churches continue to pay their bills during this COVID-19 virus. Thank you for all of you who have already supported the church in numerous ways, and for those who support by watching our service and participating. I'll invite readers to join me. 1 through 17. When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. 
If anyone says anything to you, just say this, the Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt, and put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others kept, cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the Son of David! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest heaven! When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? The crowds were saying, this is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. Then Jesus entered the temple and drove out all who were selling and buying in the temple. And he overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who sold doves. He said to them, It is written, My house shall be called a house of prayer, and you are making it a den of robbers. The blind and the lame <clears throat> came to him in the temple, and he cured them. But when the chief priests and the scribes saw the amazing things that he did and heard the children crying out in the temple, Hosanna to the son of David, they became angry and said to him, Do you hear what these are saying? Jesus said to them, Yes, have you never read? Out of the mouths of infants and nursing babies, you have prepared praise for yourself. He left them and went out of the city to Bethany and spent the night there. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I think Barbara Park is a genius when it comes to expressing the feelings that young children feel. And I find it amazing that her Judy B. Jones books are number 71 on the American Libraries Association's list of most challenged or banned children's books. But those who are in power always get to control who's invited or banned from the party or parade or whatever, right? Well, one of my very favorite Judy B. Jones books is the one that my younger daughter Hannah read in the prose category for speech competition in her sophomore year in high school. It's called Judy B. Jones and that Meanie Jim's birthday. The heart of the book is Judy B.'s reaction to being the only one in her kindergarten class not invited to her classmate's birthday party. She is, of course, very hurt, which she transfers to anger, leading her to rough Jim up a little bit and to try to move her birthday to the same day as Jim so that she can have a rival party and not invite him. You know that the route Jesus used for his Palm Sunday parade had been used many times before by other people, mainly military generals who had come to devastate and conquer Jerusalem. After the city had been vanquished, the commanding general would often mount a white horse and ride down the Mount of Olives into the Kidron Valley and up to Jerusalem, entering through the eastern gate of the walled city, followed by other generals or soldiers on horses and those who had been a part of the conquering party. These victory parades were not for common people, except to intimidate them and to remind them that they would be the ones to be forced to work to rebuild whatever the conquerors wanted rebuilt. Oh, some Jewish religious leaders might have been invited to some of these parties, parades, if for no other reason than to show common people that they'd still be able to practice their own religion as long as it wasn't a threat to those in power. But Jesus' parade, it was different. He wasn't a conquering hero. He was, to quote the people, a prophet from Nazareth and Galilee who had captured the hearts and the minds of the common people and filled them with hope. He was, they said, Son of David, Savior, Lord, the one coming in the name of the Lord, the Messiah, the Christ. I doubt that in 
invitations were sent far and wide, but every person, common person, seemed to understand that he or she had been invited to participate in this Palm Sunday parade, and participate they did by taking off their coats and spreading them on the road, by waving leafy branches. No doubt Jesus endeared himself to common people by overturning the tables of the money changers and the benches of those selling doves, two groups who had cornered the market on providing the right money for offerings and the right animals for sacrifice. Yes, those who were in power always tried to keep down the common people. But do you know who Jesus led in his procession? As he came into the temple courtyard, the blind and the lame joined him. Even though they were expressly forbidden to enter the temple itself, they had been disinvited by religious leaders who justified their actions by quoting Old Testament rules and laws that implied that God only wanted the best of the best in the temple, only the righteous. And everyone knew the blind and the lame were blind and lame because of their sins or the sins of their parents, right? Wrong. Jesus taught different. And he said that God's house was a house of prayer for all people, including the blind and lame, even children. I imagine some of you listening probably grew up when children were supposed to be seen and not heard. But in Jesus' day, they didn't even want the children seen. They were to stay clear of important places like the temple. But on Palm Sunday, they followed Jesus right into the temple courtyard, and they continued to shout, Hosanna to the Son of David! The religious leaders were upset, already upset by Jesus' overturning of the tables. They told them to tell the children to hush or to correct their theology. Of course, Jesus wasn't about to hush the children or correct their theology. He invited them into his movement early in his ministry, and he wasn't about to disinvite them now. Besides, they were telling the truth. But aren't truth tellers often told to hush or threatened if they don't hush up? That's the way of the world, those in power. But on Palm Sunday, the children spoke the truth, and Jesus did not correct them or hush them. That's who I miss most this Palm Sunday as I preach to a nearly empty church, save for a few who are making it possible for us to enjoy this service. I'm missing the children. We'd already planned and publicized the children's parades, walking through the sanctuary, waving their palms as we sang songs. You know, growing up in church, two of my very favorite Sundays were Palm Sunday and Easter. Because those were Sundays in which children seemed to be invited, welcomed, and wanted. In fact, on Palm Sunday and Easter, even adults tended to act like children, which seems to be right in line with what Jesus taught. Jesus said, unless you change and become as children, you cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. Whoever is humble like a child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. If you receive a child in my name, you receive me. And let the little children come to me and don't forbid them, for the kingdom of God is theirs. After this service, we're going to have a car parade through the streets of Lenox, a track or two. Even if you think that's a bad idea, given the threat of COVID-19 and our president and governor both saying that home is the best place to be, Know that we're not trying to thumb our nose at anyone or belittle the seriousness of the virus. We're not trying to show disregard for our elected leaders or put anyone at risk. We're merely trying to be a witness, to witness to the fact that in Jesus invites us to follow him, to show the goodness of God, the love of God, the saving power of Christ himself. Spiritual health and expression are as important as physical health and expression. And today, we remember that our primary allegiance is always to God, known to us in and through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of heaven and earth, who reigns even as coronavirus dominates the news and our consciousness. 
Christ is Lord even over the coronavirus. At the end of Barbara Park's book, Meanie Jim's Birthday Party, Junie B. Jones gets an invitation to the party. It's coerced, mind you, but still, she gets invited. And so I invite all of you to the party that God throws every day for all creation, a celebration of God's love and grace and forgiveness. I invite you because God has already invited you in Jesus Christ. And that's the good news for today. Amen. Our creed is taken from 1 John 2, 2, and points us ahead to Jesus' death on the cross. Together, Jesus Christ is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not only for our sins, but for the sins of the whole world. I invite you to join in the closing hymn, Hosanna, loud Hosanna. It's 187 in our hymn.